It's a myth. That's a talking point. There aren't pedophile rings being busted. It doesn't exist. Yeah, like the deputy pope and Senator Menendez and all the rest of it. You people are crazy. You are something else, man. Wow. Can you imagine working for Comedy Central and posing as a news reporter when you're really a comic and then reading off a teleprompter and defending this? What a bunch of desperate losers. So that's all coming up as well. But yeah, Republicans to raise taxes, consumer confidence falls, new home sales hit eight month low. And uh, you know, they were trying to get the consumer confidence up, did get some of the new jobs up, but didn't get the stock market up. But if they can just hold those tax cuts up a little bit longer and keep Obamacare in a little bit longer, they can they can get you. Then make you real poor and have to live off handouts. And boy, isn't that sad? Because they know if we got an open free market, you'll vote for what you want, which is freedom, and then they won't be in charge. See, <laughs> too bad, isn't it? Just too bad. But intellectually, we're breaking with them. And so the NFL and all of them can go bankrupt with us as well. How's that sound? And Hollywood and Viacom and all the rest of you people. You were all living off laundered money. You're all living off a bunch of Ponzi schemes that make Bernie Madoff look like a choir boy. And it's all going to come down, scum. Everybody knows you're the establishment. Nice bait and switch. We are the resistance. If you're watching this transmission or listening to it, you are the resistance, not Viacom, the biggest media company in the world. Dedicated every day to lying about yours truly. A badge of unbelievable honor. But when I see your mind control slaves... The ones in the street that try to attack me, who repeat the things that are on Colbert's show and, and all these other programs. That's why I said they've been put into a mentally retarded state. And I mean that. It's very sad. Now, if you want to break with these people, and if you want to go up against them, and if you want to absolutely break their will... You financially support us in the opposition. Yes, I'm in opposition to the globalists colonizing this country, making us poor, telling Africans they can't have electricity or cars or air conditioning. Yeah, I'm against, uh, I'm in opposition to 51% of blacks never being born. Or Chicago, 95% of the deaths, black on black crime. I'm in opposition of you, the establishment, claiming that you're the resistance. Yeah, you're the resistance to freedom. You're the suffocating force of pseudo-intellectual trash financed by the big remnants of the robber baron combine constellation allied with the chai -coms, destined to fail because we're now aware of your operation. So everything you do only leads quicker to your own destruction. <laughs> See, you know it's not a bluff. I'm promoting Americana. 57 Chevys and Marilyn Monroe and rockets to the moon. I'm promoting Americana victory. You're promoting protest nation. Look at Drudge Report. Another congresswoman takes a knee because she's only got tens of millions of dollars and bitches and spews her anti-white racism. Sheila Jackson Lee kneels, but it gets better. I've got a clip here. I'm going to get back into Stephen Bannon and more after Ron Paul leaves. He's coming on the next segment. Sheila Jackson Lee kneels on the House floor in support of NFL players. Yeah, on your knees to Soros and his destabilization program. I love it. The Dallas Cowboys, no longer America's team. They're a disgusting exercise of being bullied by Soros. That's all coming up. But if you look at the protest nation... We've now got good old crazy Maxine Waters up to her usual tricks. And that's another clip that I'm going to be getting to coming up where Maxine Waters goes next level. But right now, let's go back to the Bannon clips. Bannon at Roy Moore rally in Alabama. They talk about hate speech. Let's talk about economic hate crimes that's been working men and women of this country. That's powerful. That talking point's the truth. Here it is. 
They talk about hate speech. Let's talk about economic hate crimes that have been done on the working men and women in this country. They've gutted this country. They've gutted and manufacturing jobs and shipped them overseas. You know what for? For profit. You think this opioid crisis just came about? There's a direct correlation between the factories and jobs that were shipped to China and the workers left behind with total despair. Strategic military operation. Now here's Mad Maxine. Impeach Trump over NFL kneelers. She's gone completely insane. Doesn't even make any sense. Uh, she says, um, we'll just hear it from her. Here it is. He's pointing now uh, to the NFL. We know that the majority of these players are African-Americans, and we know what he is doing. We're not tricked or fooled by him in any shape, form, or fashion. And someone said, how is it he can never criticize Putin or the Kremlin or Charlottesville uh, and those KKK, nationalists, supremacists, uh, etc.? And here he is strongly criticizing, you know, football players and NFL players. So there you go. All of that is a lie. All he's done is criticize Russia when Russia's done nothing. He's been bullied into that. All he's done is talk about Charlottesville at nauseum. All lies out of that pig's mouth. And of course he got a bunch of spoiled, rotten, racist black players. Of course he's talking about them. Clean. The North Korean communist dictatorship's diplomat canceled his speech at the UN, which was unheard of, and then came back Saturday uh, and, well, why not just hear it directly from him, what he said? He congressman, former congressman, medical doctor, Air Force veteran, uh, Ron Paul was against the Iraq wars. He was uh, against the Afghanistan operations. He's been against all of it. He's been proven right. His son, and of course himself still in Congress, spearheaded, exposing the fact that the West had backed Al-Qaeda and then ISIS later. And then Trump rightfully picked up that uh, gauntlet and took the baton forward and has helped clean up a lot of ISIS and kicked them out of uh, Syria to a great extent. Now would be the time to come home. Instead, the neocons and others uh, want to go into Syria and kick out Assad himself. Ron Paul has written extensively on that. So is the Von Mies Institute and the Ron Paul Institute. Uh, the story's posted on newswars.com and infowars.com. Ron Paul, how to end the Korea crisis. Kim joins Saddam, Gaddafi, Assad on a list of madmen, says Paul... This is a complex issue, but he's got a very well-researched uh, angle on it, so I want to get his take. Thank you for joining us during this critical time. Thank you. Good to be with you. Now, there's a delay today with our connection to you in Houston, but that's okay, uh, again, just so folks know. Uh, Dr. Paul, let's get into your plan to avert, which could happen any time, uh, causing a huge nuclear war. Well, the sooner we get out of there, the better. You know, we went into uh, Korea when I was in high school, and it was totally illegal, unconstitutional. It was done without the permission of the people. It was done within a week after the Civil War broke out in Korea. And uh, some of my teachers never came home. And ever since that time, I've been saying, why are we there? What, what should we be there during all my campaigning, especially the presidential campaigns? I said, just come home. We've spent a trillion dollars over there, to, uh, you know, keeping them together. And look at what's happened in Vietnam. We, we finally lost in Vietnam after 60,000 Americans get killed. And now we get along with them. We don't need to be there. We're just trying to provoke a problem. And this, this guy's nuts over there, so why provoke him? We, don't, we, we are acting from a sense of insecurity that we have to say, you know, we're tough. Don't mess with us or we'll bomb you. But that, that to me is just uh, sort of childish. So the sooner we get out of there, the better. We've been there way too long. And, uh, you know, this whole idea, the stage is set now that, you know, the Koreans are threatening, well, we're, we might shoot down an airplane. Well, what if there's now that that stage is set, it's progressing because of our involvement. Somebody's going to use a false flag and somebody's going to shoot down the airplane just so that this war gets started. So that's why I, don't, I believe in non-intervention. We ought to defend this country. But it's time to come home from Korea. We've lost too many lives. We killed, even when we got involved in that civil war, you know, with uh, uh, the North and the South, uh, we bombed the North to smithereens. We killed 30% of their population, and they had never attacked us. We never declared war. We went there under the U.N. banner. We have an insane foreign policy, and unfortunately, it really hasn't changed that much with our new president.
Dr. Ron Paul is our guest. We're talking about the North Korea situation. And obviously, uh, they're now sending bombers over the DMZ. Big provocations. We know a lot of Ukrainian uh, missiles that give them ICBM capability have been shipped in, smuggled into the north. And when you talk about a false flag, how do we know some major arms manufacturer or some other country doesn't smuggle a missile in like we saw in Ukraine, shoot down one of our uh, bombers or try to shoot it down, and then suddenly... Uh, we're into a kinetic action. A war starts. The North uh, then attacks the South, Seoul, with 100,000 pieces of artillery. They've been threatening to detonate a hydrogen bomb above ground to attack Tokyo. We could very quickly get into a large nuclear war. And a lot of people say, well, we can easily defeat North Korea. Well, of course we can. But what happens if China or Russia gets involved, Dr. Paul? Well, they will get involved. And, uh, you know, when it started way back in the 50s, uh, we thought, well, we'll take care of this. And a month after the war broke out, uh, you know, we essentially won the war. And then we moved up and decided, well, we'll occupy North Korea, went up to the border, and then the Chinese came in. Sure, they're going to be involved. But I think you just made the case for why we need to be out of there uh, because, uh, you know, the North Korea... The guy is goofy, but I'll tell you what, he, he does know what he's doing because he has to threaten because he's a, he, he believes that if he gives up and capitulates and does exactly what we tell him to do, that what will happen like what happened to Saddam Hussein, what happened to Gaddafi, and, uh, and then how do we, how do we treat, uh, uh, you know, Assad in Syria? We have an empire to defend. We run the world, and it's wrong. It doesn't work. Millions of people have died over this, and it's time we as a people woke up and say, we ought to mind our own business. We ought to come home and defend this country. We don't need to be worrying about, you know, battleships and bombers and flying back and showing that we have strength. They're weapons that were used in World War II. And this guy who runs North Korea, he's not going to invade the United States. He's not going to launch a missile. Just remember, the whole thing dealing with Iraq about all the danger, great danger, and the propagandists, the deep state, the media, convince the American people that Saddam Hussein was a danger. They're doing the same thing now with North Korea. And that's why we ought to wise up and just not buy into this and, uh, and look at this as a constitutional issue and not to say, well, we need to go to war with this guy. And unfortunately, we're marching that way. But we better look at ourselves, too. And why are we involved in 120 different countries with our military personnel? And why are we always looking for trouble? And uh, I would say that it's very, very dangerous. But just to say, well, it was always Saddam Hussein's fault. It was always Qaddafi. Coffee's fault. It's always uh, uh, Assad's fault. And uh, then turn around and say, oh, yeah, but look at Russia. Look at what they're going to do. I mean, it is the neocon foreign policy that we have been following. We still follow the neocon foreign policy. I think that's tragic. That said, I agree with you in, in practice and function. But even people like Joel Skousen that was agreed with you about not having a war uh, you know, in the last five or six, saying they were frauds. He says when you get down to North Korea now, they do have nuclear weapons. They are being backed by China. They are a real threat. They are firing missiles uh, right over Japan. Uh, they can test weapons, but 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 doing it in this way, threatening preemptively to blow up the U.S. to say it's inevitable, that's pointing a gun at us and really next-level bravada. It's incredible chicken. And then you have the Clintons, as you know, transferring the reactors, transferring the missiles in the mid-90s that you and others criticized when you first got back into Congress. And so there's a lot of blame going around here. And then you just have the horrible little communist third-generation dictator fat off the blood of his little skinny citizens. I agree with you, the poor you know, Korean, uh, North Korean slaves and their children. I feel sorry for them. I don't want to have to you know, nuke the DMZ. Uh, but if they do strike us first, I think they may be crazy enough to do it, uh, then it's going to take a, a, a major commitment to make sure they can't counter respond. Dr. Paul? Uh, you're, you're, buy, you're buying into all the garbage that's passed out there by the deep state and neoconservatives and, and the media. My suggestion very clearly on what we should do 
is we should allow the South Koreans to talk to the North Koreans. What's wrong with that? They're the ones that have everything at stake, and we don't even allow them to do that. And, uh, and, and yet they're willing to. Just uh, last week, the South Koreans, in an effort to break this conflict, they sent a couple million dollars to North Korea to take care of some of the people, the kids that are suffering from our sanctions. The people suffer. We kill people. We killed almost a million Iraqis with our sanctions before we went to war. And all these sanctions do is just provoke the bitterness. We need to get allowed. Why do we prohibit the South Koreans from talking to the North Koreans? By the way, Madeleine we did Albright. that in Vietnam. And the French and Americans did that in mm -hmm. millions of... Sure, sure. I mean, it's like Madeleine Albright said, a half million Iraqi children is a good price to pay with the sanctions. It's probably... Way over a million lands at British Medical Journal said it was like 1.3 uh, back in like 2007, uh, going back to 1990. And, and understand, Dr. Paul, I'm just wargaming both sides of the debate. I've not bought in to the garbage that we need to have a war or that sanctions are always the best thing. As you said, Vietnam now loves us, hates communist China, is becoming a free market powerhouse. And we should have made a deal with Ho Chi Minh to go in there and be free market to begin with. But we double-crossed him, tried to overthrow him, uh, as you know, uh, back in 1960. So I understand the history of it, as you do as a former Air Force officer. The only thing I'm getting at here is, is that we can certainly recognize uh, communist regimes are also horrible evils. Just because we have neocon problems here, I mean, certainly uh, this is a great example of how communism is a horrible nightmare like Venezuela. Let's skip this break. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Paul. Well, I, I still think that you're seeing them as a much uh, gr greater threat. And when I was drafted in 1962 over the Cuban crisis, you know, there was a, a real hot Cold War going on at the time. But we, we, we had danger then. The Soviets had 30,000 nuclear missiles and weapons. But we, we didn't provoke or think or thought we had to get rid of them. We actually dealt with them. Kennedy talked to them and, you know, got rid of that crisis we had in Cuba. That North Korea, they, they don't have this capability. It's not, China is not, it is not, interested, not in their interest to allow this guy to provoke and, and get into a war with us. So that, that, isn't, that isn't quite accurate to say that they're in cahoots with China and they have nuclear bombs and, and all this sort of thing. And uh, I, I think that we should allow South Korea to start having negotiations. Let, let China and Russia, they're involved more. They should be more involved than us. Let them uh, monitor the sure, talk. Dr. Paul. But why are we six, 7,000 miles away? Once again, we've been involved in a civil war that's been going on endlessly. It's time we stopped it. Let's be clear. I agree with you. I have four children. You've got a bunch of children. You've got a bunch of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I'm told now. And I absolutely do not want us to have a nuclear war. I do not want this to happen. I understand that what you're saying is historically true. I'm simply pointing out that President Trump has been right on so many other issues. And I understand that it looks like there's been an escalation. He believes that the strategic appeasement, the strategic patience has run out uh, and that he's looking for some other way to get North Korea to come to the bargaining table. Hell, months ago, Rex Tillerson was saying, let's have talks, stop this rhetoric, and it only seemed to encourage uh, Kim Jong-un. So I understand you can say we're ganging up on North Korea and the people hurt are the poor folks in it. That's true. I'm not saying you're wrong. But what about the dictators? What about the horrible, uh, you know, evil leaders of the nation? What are we supposed to do about them? What do we do? Well, you're Alex, you're, you're, Alex, you're speaking for the neoconservatives. That's their line of talk of why we have to do this. And I'm just arguing it's totally unnecessary. It didn't work. You admit it didn't work in, in Vietnam. And we should have done that differently, and we're friends with them. We win more in peace than we do in war, but we've been in Korea. This, this whole thing is just a, a, based on a lot of misconceptions. I think our administration has accepted neocon lies, and they're going with it. But they're, and, 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 and they, I agree they, they with get you. get into trouble because of the diplomacy and the tone and all this. But 
and I agree with you. So in just a minute or two, because I have a few other questions dealing with the economy and what's happening with all this NFL race baiting and, and, and the rest of the culture wars. What is your advice to President Trump? What is your advice to the president? Bring the troops home. <laughs> I would advise him just what my position has been for years. Get out of, out of interventionism. Bring the troops home. Get out of all this me. Get out of, the, uh, out of Syria, out of Iraq. The whole works. You know, start dismantling our empire. Get all our troops out of Korea and allow people to settle their own dispute, but not to join this uh, neocon effort to continue to run the world and distort the truth because they love the wars in the Middle East. And now the neocons uh, are, are behind all this activity, why we have this great enemy, uh, the, the, the North Koreans. I think when we get so upset about that, that we're insecure, we act like a bunch of bullies, we're insecure, we don't know how to react and say, oh, they're coming, they're going to come us and they're going to bomb us. Alex, that is not true. And the Chinese aren't on that side of that issue at all. They are holding, holding him back, if nothing else, because uh, they have too much to lose. They, they don't want any more war in North Korea than we do. So I don't really think it's right to say this guy in North Korea is going to, uh, because he's aligned with the Chinese, that they're going to help him, you know, provoke a war with the United States. Just, just to be clear, just to be clear, their main trading partner is their main trading partner is the Chinese. I'd love to see the two countries unified in this nightmare end. Uh, I'm not going with that line. I'm looking at both the lines of reasoning here just to play devil's advocate. I overall agree with you and hope that's the way this goes. But they do say they have hydrogen bombs. It is believed they have them. They're saying they'll preemptively use them. So they're putting out horrible rhetoric as well. I get your point that they need to look strong. They saw what happened to Iraq and other countries that didn't have nuclear weapons. Uh, they look at, uh, you know, Iran looks at that. So, so moving away from that, because I think we actually agree on that subject. And I pray everything turns out all right. We've got your article posted on Infowars.com promoting that. Getting into the NFL thing. We have the WikiLeaks. It's George Soros saying, let's go to culture war, even during the campaign, promote racial division. You have a, had a black president. You've got all these millionaire football players. People are tuning out of the NFL in droves. And they're only accelerating it as we see more and more wound up attacks on white churches. Whites are being killed in hate crimes. Uh, and it's so fashionable to be anti-white. And if you point that out, all this anti-white racism, they call us racist when everybody knows you and I and others have been calling for unity and, you know, really bringing the country together. What is all this about? Where do you see this going? What's going to end up happening, Dr. Paul? Well, well, I, I, th I think it is part of this uh, cultural Marxism and, you know, attacking tradition and culture is part of, of their tool. But when, it, when you narrow it down to the, uh, to the demonstrations on the football field, actually the answers are coming back pretty fast. The, people are disgusted with it, and they're disgusted with the football players, they're disgusted with the owners, they're starting to boycott, and I, and I think that is very good. I just think the president ought to just, you know, be a lot less noisy about it, you know, threatening people, uh, you know, that they're committing some crime. No, uh, this can all be solved with a libertarian understanding of property. Uh, what those ball players do uh, is determined by the owners, just as it would be in your studio or in your house or in my house. Uh, it's the ownership. So it has nothing to do with government and freedom of speech. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment. And, but it has a lot to do with what the cultural Marxists are trying, trying to do. But the people who condone this and encourage it and, and expand this with the kneeling business, I think, I think that's dangerous. But it's a reflection of the ownership. It can be stopped immediately by just the owner saying, no more. That is it. Uh, but if they condone it, you can't write a law and you can't intimidate. You can't say uh, that they're right under the First Amendment. No, it has nothing to do with the First Amendment. I it totally has agree to with do you. with what the owners are going to do with their property. And the market will, the market will answer. No, I agree. Trump's gone answer. too far when, 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 when he talks problem. about having a rule. It's his right to come out and say he thinks they're, you know, idiots or whatever. But when he goes further... 
he then starts encroaching on free speech. I mean, I think a lot of it's figurative, but then how do the owners not let them do celebrations in the end zone, even though they're hiking their leg, peeing on the president uh, symbolically? How can they fine them for that, but not fine them uh, if they don't stand for the Star Spangled Banner? And, and, and I get it's free speech. You shouldn't have to stand. My point is there's this open globalist attack on America now, and that's why I'm simply saying I have my free speech to say I am going to boycott the NFL forever. What do you think? Dr. Paul. That's the that's the answer. That's the answer. Boy, boycott them. And if the if the owners want to act like jerks and prohibit one sort of expression of, of a political opinion and not the other one, then they just dig a bigger hole for themselves. And uh, and, and I, I, you know, the other thing about this, I need to get this in if possible. You know, it, a lot of this got worse. Once the football team started taking money from the government to That's promote right. this, this super nationalism and militarism, because all of that military stuff, they get a lot of money, but that's to support the interventionist foreign policy and the military, and the military can do no wrong. It's support for the empire. That is where the problem is. And the American people should absolutely not allow our government to give one cent.